Yeah. I did notice that. Hey. With God, all things are possible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Check, check. Can you hear me? Can you? Turn the monitor up a little bit, would you? Can you hear me? Just a little bit. Hallelujah. Hey, good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see all these smiling faces, people chatting and sharing and fellowshipping. Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, things that me and uh, Bill came to the conclusion that we're going to try more often to do is to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if we feel like the presence of God is moving, we're going to try to maybe play more songs, maybe have the altar call, whatever might happen. Amen. But, hey, I'm always game for preaching a little longer. But but the thing is, you know, sometimes if you're not careful, we can fall into the groove. Three songs, preaching, out of here. And we and God might want to move. Amen. Have you looked at your life and see the need for God? So if we do tend to get into some longer songs or if the time just gets and we just sit quietly or whatever, I know sometimes when it gets quiet, people get uncomfortable. You know, even when I'm standing up here trying to be quiet before the Lord, I, I, there's a feeling of pressure and, and urgency to move and do something. But we don't have to feel that way. You know, we can just say, hey, let's just sit here quietly. And if it does get quiet, or the song goes a little long, then we just either, you know, do what we feel like God would lead us to do. To pray, humble ourselves, go to the altar. But, you know, we're the body of Christ. Amen. We're the body of Christ. So if you don't mind, let's stand real quick. And we're going to invite the presence of the Lord. We're going to ask him to knit our hearts together. Because the whole purpose for the worship before the preached word is to worship God. So that our hearts are tender before him and our hearts come out of the world and we give him an opportunity amen to speak we give him an opportunity to move in our heart anybody notice that your heart is stubborn you ever notice that raise your hand if you have a stubborn heart all right i'm in a good place they're both in the feet hey hey the good thing is we can admit we're stubborn amen Ten years ago, we wouldn't even admit that. I ain't, I ain't stern. Yeah. Well, praise God. So that's the point of worship. Right now, even now, by faith, Lord, we ask you, Father, that you would unite our hearts, Lord, and that you would knit them together. Lord, we're here to honor you, the God of heaven and earth. You're the creator of all things. Lord, you're not a religion. You're not a good idea. You're not a, a book of good thoughts and self-help. You are the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all things. And we are your people that you saw fit to call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And you even brought us here tonight as the body of Christ so that we could worship you together in faith and in unity, Lord. And then if we get to the word of God, that you could speak to the, our hearts through the scriptures. And we ask you, Lord, that you would edify us. And that you would fellowship with us and you would help us to dine on you and meditate upon you, Lord. And we just even now by faith pray, thy kingdom come, Lord God. Your will be done in our hearts, in this house, in earth as it is in heaven, according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen.
one's a soft one. Let's give.
Praise God. Sorry, I switched that so quick. The cords just kind of flew out. <laughs> yeah, right. Does God have your heart tonight? Let's worship Him for that. You have my heart. sing to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah is right. Amen. Praise God. We thank you, Father, that you are worthy of worship, Lord God. You are worthy of us gathering here in your name, Lord God, exalting you and lifting you up, Father. We thank you for all that you've done in our lives and all that you continue to do, Lord. Even now, by faith, we ask you, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts as we read the scriptures, as only you can, Father. It's you that we need. It's you that we look towards and for, Lord God. So we invite you, King of glory, to come have your way in us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I heard it's your birthday, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Rick. Happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to Rick. Happy Put him on the spot. To Rick. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brother Rick. 
Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. Pastor told me, and I said, I'm getting that in before I forget, brother. What a better place to spend your birthday, amen? Man, when I was a kid, we used to spank them after we gave them cake. And we used to, did you guys get spankings when you were, didn't? Yeah, me too. And the older you get, the more spankings you got. So what are we up to tonight, brother? Ooh. <laughs> That's a lot. Praise God. We're going to take up the tithes and offerings. If you would like to give to God, give to God in faith. We don't give out of compulsion or obligation. We give to God in obedience to the word and out of faith to the word. Amen? Huh. I like it. So, Lord, even now, Father, we bring an offering to you. We surrender it to you by faith. We ask you to multiply it. Lord, we ask you to put it to our account, Lord God, for the faith that we had to put it in, in your kingdom, Lord. And we ask you to use it on this corner to declare the gospel, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Awesome. Hey, we're in the book of Romans. I'm going to do a quick re uh, recap from last week. Sometimes you do a quick recap. It's not a quick recap. Spend half the time on the on the recap. We don't want to do that. I do want to read the scriptures. I want to bust through them real fast, but I want to look on the outline. You got an outline? Everybody have an outline? So on the outline, it says the review of last week is four points from last week, okay? We're going to read the book of Romans chapter 1, but I do want to look at the, the bullets here. It says called of God. So the first thing that we know when we're going to read is that Paul was called of God, just like you and I are called of God. Amen. Paul knew his call and operated in it. Amen. Do we know our call? And if we do, are we operating in it? Amen. The call came according to the word of God. The call of God came through the Holy Scriptures from God. You can't get a call apart from God. You can't get a call, a call apart from the word of God. Amen. And it was based on a couple things. Obedience it was for the obedience to the faith, but it was based on Christ's resurrection and burial. Amen. So that's what the, the call of God is based on. It's not based on anything apart from that. Why? Because the whole foundation of the scriptures is based on the death and resurrection of Christ. Amen. Christ being God in the flesh. So the call of God has to be about that, and the call of God is that. It can't be apart from that. The grace and peace for the call, from the call of God is for us. So from the call of God, guess what comes with it? Grace and peace. And this is the most important thing, letter D. It says, the call isn't for our own personal use, though it does include that, but it's, all, it's mainly for the body of Christ. Amen? So the call of God isn't just so that we can take the call of God and use it the way we see fit. Right. The call of God is based on the scriptures, but it's specifically for the body of Christ. Amen. Specifically for this body of Christ, but not just this body of Christ, the body of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? This is what's awesome about God. He's over in Germany right now. He's over in uh, Africa right now. He's over in Israel right now. He's working through his people. Amen. He's in China. Do you know that they banned God in, the, in China? They banned God in China. But he's still there, amen? That's right. That's right. They're trying to ban him right here. Hey, are we going to let him, them ban him from us, amen? You know, they banned, uh, they banned God in prayer from schools, you know what I'm saying? But I guarantee you there's kids in school praying to God, amen? There's been people been put in jail and put in, you know, in court dates over standing on the street corner and praying. I mean, those are perilous times. Those are times to make us think where we're really at. But the beautiful thing about God, he's the one that's the giver of the gift, and he's the one that's the giver of the call, and he's also the one that's the fulfiller of the call. Amen? Because sometimes we get a call from God, and we go off on our own tangent and do it our own way, and then we can't figure out why things just ain't panning out. Because we're trying to take the gift of God, the call of God, and we're taking it and using it for our own personal use. We can see, I think in the scriptures, it's talking about a, a sorcerer was doing that. Tried to take and, and buy the gift of God. I mean, we can't do that. So let's look through here, Romans chapter 1, verse 1. As we read, I want the, the, spirit, the scriptures to speak to our hearts. Amen. I'm going to read 1 through 12. I'm going to try to not even get into it. I just want to read it more than anything. 
It says Paul, uh, he was a bond servant of Jesus Christ. He's making that declaration, and he's declaring also that he was called by God to be an apostle. And what I like about that is for you and I, the call of God is for the whatever the call is. He knew it was to be an apostle, but he wasn't just an apostle, but he was an apostle. But he knew it was the call of God. And I, do you think, let me ask you this, if he was an apostle, do you think it was an easy call? Do you think he wanted the call? Probably not. No. Hey. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Hey, he was probably content with just killing Christians. <laughs> yeah, this is a good little job. It's a paying job. <laughs> Serious. But the call of God was above him, and he probably, how many people feel, I mean, we did this last week, you feel that you got a call of God on your life. Have you ever noticed in the call of God that there was a battle to fulfill that call? Have you ever noticed even just to pray, there's a battle to fulfill the call of God, a yearning in your heart to pray? Amen? Why do you think that is? What did you say? Did you say the enemy? Yeah, doesn't, want doesn't want us to pray. Amen. How many people just tonight had a battle getting to church? Anybody? Hallelujah. Amen. That's part of it. But, the, hey, but we go back to what Paul said, and you put your name there, and you, you say, I'm a, whoever I am called of God to be a servant of the Most High God. How many people believe that this is your body? Calvary Chapel, La Mesa. Here's another good question. How many people tried to run from being at Calvary Chapel? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Hey, because if we're called here, then we're called of God here. And God's the one that designs us to be there. Amen. And if we're called by God to be here, then there's got to be a reason for us to be here. And sometimes the reason is good. Sometimes it's edifying. Sometimes it's not as good because sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes it's a battle. Sometimes it's a struggle. Sometimes it's a victory. But you ever go through that battle with God and the victory and then you get the victory and then you can look back and say, man, I'm so glad that I'm back here or I'm doing this. I made it through. Amen. I always encourage people and this is what I do myself. I I remember when I lost my grandson, and when times get tough, I always go back to that moment, and I say, no matter what, I'm not losing force. No matter what. The other day, me and my wife were doing a thing, and we were like, man, are we even being used of God? And then that night in the ministry, God just broke out, and we got in the car, and the first thing we said is, man, the day we're discouraged and the day we're about to give up is the day that God shines through. Amen. So going forward now, I know that that's one of the moments I'm going to cling to. Right when I was thinking it's maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this, and then I can go back to that moment. I mean, I, mean, I guarantee you Paul had lots of those moments. It was a struggle, and the one thing he was struggling the most was with his own flesh. It's the same battle and struggle that you and I have, our own flesh. But he goes and he, he, goes and he makes this declaration. And some of us in this room might need to declare it again to ourselves and declare, uh, declare it again to God. Hey, I'm a bond servant. I didn't just sign up to God when it was a peachy, deep, peachy uh, good day. I signed up to God to be a bond servant through the good times and the bad times. Amen. Amen. Called to be separated to, separated to the gospel, not by the gospel or for the gospel, but to the gospel, which God promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. See, the call of God is based on the Scriptures of God. Amen? Amen? Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and he was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith, for what reason? Obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name, not our name, for his name, among whom you, that would be us, and those reading in Rome, also are the called of Jesus Christ. Yeah, but that was for them back then. No, it's for us today. How do we know? Because we're reading the Bible right now. 
we're reading the words of God in print that God ordained for us to be clinging to today. Amen? To you who are in Rome, beloved, called to be saints, and this is what he declared to them, grace to you and peace from God. We talked a, bit, a little bit about this last week, but that's a promise from God to you and I. Grace to you and peace from the pastor. doesn't say that. Peace from the government. No. Peace from the God our, of our fathers and the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he says the God of our fathers, meaning of the old scriptures that they've been clinging to. Amen. And that's what we got to remember right now. You and I are clinging to the scriptures of the promise of God. It's not the promise of man. It's not an opinion of man. Because if it's opinion of man, what do we do? We take it or leave it. If it fits our need, then we take it. If it doesn't fit our need, we leave it. But if we go past that and we go, no, it's the word of God to me. Amen. Now there's a reason not only to fight for it, but there's also a reason to watch for the fulfilling of it in our lives. Amen. And then he goes on to say, grace and peace to you from God, the, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. And I like this. And I said this last week. He wasn't just getting people saved and then moving on. But he was giving, pe getting people saved, leading people to Christ. And then he was laboring with them in the faith to not just have them to be saved but to have them to be servants of the Most High God, bond servants. Amen? That lies in the battle a lot of times. Let's read on. For God is my witness whom I serve. How did he say he serves them? With my spirit. So how do we serve God? With our spirit. What do we know about our spirit? Anybody? It's one with the Lord. What else? Yes. Anything else? It's a gift. It says in the scripture that it searches the deep things of God. It searches the deep things of man. Amen. So he's not trying to serve him in the flesh. What happens if we serve God in the flesh? We fail. That's awesome. What else do we do? We get worn out. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, we get worn out. What else? Oh, I like it. I like it. Why? <laughs> That's why he gave us the word of God. Amen. How many people have ever been on a strange doctrine? You ever been on a strange doctrine? You look back and go, boy, that was a strange doctrine. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible does say there's doctrines of what? Devils and demons out there. There's devils and demons out there trying to declare doctrines. What do you think the the uh, the spirit over all the alien talk all of a sudden. All of a sudden, did you guys know that all these years our government's been hiding aliens from us for 50, 60, 100 years? Man, oh, man. But now all of a sudden we have enough technology to know that there are really aliens. Amen? Doctrines of demons. Do you believe there's something out there maybe? No? I have proof. How? Tell me. I want to know. Praise God. I do believe there are demonic forces out there that might be deceiving us. Yes. That's a good possibility. Amen. Let's read on. Because this is what he said. Verse 9. For God is my witness. So he's not even declaring on his own. But he says, God is my witness that I serve the Lord in the gospel. Amen. Of his son that, that without ceasing I make mention of you. Always in my prayers, making request if by some means, now at last, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. See, he wanted to be with them, but he couldn't be with them. And it was the will of God for them not to be together. Amen. See, sometimes God's mean like that. He won't let us do what we want to do. Amen. Amen to that, brother. He's not mean. Amen. He's not mean. He's not a mean God. Amen. 
But does he have us do things that we don't want to do? Uh, how many things, how many people today just did something themselves in, in God that they didn't want to do? Anybody? Hallelujah. What'd you do, brother? Anybody else? How, hey. At work? Or grandbaby? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Which one's harder, the grandbaby, right? <laughs> ah. But anyway, it goes on to say, verse 10, making request if by some means now at last I may find a will by the will of God to a way by the will of God to come to you. So this is what he says, for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. And we talked about it last week. He's talking about he couldn't be there. But he wanted to be there because he wanted to impart into them a spiritual gift. Was it Paul's spiritual gift? No. What, what, did, what did Paul have that would bring the spiritual gift to pass? The Holy Spirit. And what else? Anybody said, I think somebody said it. Faith. Faith. Amen. And what was the spiritual gift for? Everybody is a member of the body to get a spiritual gift, right? For the furtherance of what? The gospel. But God kept them apart for a reason. Amen. So let's read on. It's going to get tough here. I know that. Romans chapter 15. What is that? All right. It says on the notes, it says, with one mind joined together to strengthen one another. That's the whole point of the gospel, amen? That's the whole point of coming together, right, and, and allow, allowing the spiritual gifts to be working within us. And then he goes on to say, because what, what did he say? He, he was not there, but he wanted to be there. But who said no? God said no, so he had to, what did he have to do if God said no? Stay put, Amen. How many people in here feel like you might be, be God's telling you to stay put on anything? Anybody? Ah, how about this? That God's telling you to go forth. Both? To leave the church? I'm just messing with you, brother. Because that's kind of what he does sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Amen. So anyway, let's read on. Chapter 15, verse 1. We then, he says, who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Because what's the whole point? Is the body of Christ coming together. Amen? How many people, including myself, when you just want to come to church, your heart rears up? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody else? I'm not, there's only three of us in here that have that problem. <laughs> All right. How about the battle going to church sometimes? Hey, I'm looking forward to it sometimes all day long, and but the last 15 minutes, all of a sudden. <sighs> and the funny thing is, is when I get here, I start having fun. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a real devil. There's a real devil that he's afraid of what would happen if we as the body of Christ came together in faith, laying down our lives for one another. Amen. Being willing to be a sacrificial lamb for one another, for our nation and for our time such as this. Amen. Because the, the battle is the, the, the flesh rearing up, but God is trying to call us. And the very fact that he's calling us means it's time to go. Amen. And the enemy's terrified of us being one mind. That's the name of the title, actually. Uni uniting, building and striving in Christ, not striving like fighting but striving for a cause. Amen. But before we can really stri uh, strive for a cause, we have to be united. And before we get united, or as we get united, then we can be built up. And then when we built up, we can be going forward in assignment from God, not from man, but from God. 
Because God knows how to speak to our hearts through the scriptures whenever we read the Bible. Amen. And then when we're coming in the, in the place together, it's even that much more ability for God to move in the midst of, a, of his people. Amen. So he's saying here with that knowledge. Now he says, when we come together, we, we then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. And I looked that word up in the scruples. The definition, I have it on the outline. It says the very word is infirmity or error arising from weakness of the mind. What? What are you saying? I have a weak mind. Let's go to Romans cha- or, uh, Ephesians chapter four. Yes, we do have a weak mind. When we're in the flesh, amen. It's the weak mind that's right before you go to church going, man, I don't want to go right now. That's the weak mind. Let's look at uh, chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Verse 20. But he says here, but you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have been, if you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. So when we come to Christ, the very first thing that we have to be built up in is what? The spirit of of our mind there's another scripture that says gird up what the loins of your mind amen now he's talking about girding up the loins of your mind or being strengthened in the spirit of our mind what mind is he talking about the spiritual mind and to be built up in the spiritual mind what do we have to do study but put to work or put to death the thoughts of the carnal mind amen the old man. And when we all got saved, that was the beginning process. Amen. And then sometimes we get going in church and we think that that was done. And now we're just walking in the spirit. But this is how if you, if you could define walking in the spirit, how would you know if you're walking in the spirit? Anybody? By your fruits. That's one. That's a great answer. Anybody else? How can you know if you if you're looking at your life, if you are walking in the spirit? I like it. Life, you said? And peace. A- anything else? That's a good word, brother. The company you're walking with. Amen? Anything else? The presence of the Lord. Hey, that's kind of why me and Bill made that pact. Brother? Amen. 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 How about this? That's wonderful, brother. How about this? When you're trying to walk in the Lord and you're waiting on the Lord and then he doesn't even feel like he shows up. Anybody have that? Yeah. And then what's the process at that point? To wait, to remain steadfast. Amen. Because the thing is, the the carnal mind wants to go back. But the spiritual mind wants to go forward. Amen. Amen. It says the, the, the spirit of God will, will never what deny himself. Amen. So the fight that we're in, and that's what he's saying right here. So when we come to God, the, the first thing we got to do is put to put to um, death the carnal mind. So let me ask you, what are some of the carnal mind things that we do that hinder our faith? How about backbiting? Anybody backbite? How about gossip? How about anger? Huh? Oh, yes, yes. And that was what I'm hoping to get there, but I don't think we're going to get there. 
Jealousy? What'd you say? Lust and coveting. Yeah, yeah, amen. See, those are the things that hinder. And he said, I lost my thought, darn it. It says, be built up in the what? The spirit of our mind, amen? So let's go back a little bit. Because I know I can see we're not going to get where I was trying to go, but I'm going to go back to, let's go to e Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. That's what the edifying of the mind would do. That's what the being built up in the spirit of our mind. It will edify us in the body of Christ. What for? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be tossed we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Anybody say about it? Let this mind be in you, which is what? In Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, amen, but made himself of no reputation, taking upon himself as a servant to the point even of death, to the point of the cross even unto death. Verse 16. From whom the whole body joined together and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Which all of that is contrary to having a weak mind. Would you agree with that? But is that an easy task right there? No. How many struggles with that task right now? <laughs> and then he goes on to say, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of the old mind, futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him. See, that's the key word right there. What, do you, what does it mean to be taught by him? To be taught, to be trained in our mind, to be girding up our minds, amen? To walking in the Spirit. And by taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which, w which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holy, therefore putting away lying. Lying. Therefore, the first thing he says to put away, lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good that he may have something to give to him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that you also may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of the redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Isn't that wonderful scripture? Let's go back to Romans. Because all of that we just read right there is the practicing 
of the spirit of the mind being strengthened in us. That's how you can know, we can know as children of the Most High God, if we're walking in a strong mind, in the spirit of God, or in the mind of the flesh, if we're practicing these things. Amen? See, when we go to the Word of God, and it specifically says this, and it specifically says that, and then we don't take it and adhere to it and apply, not even to be perfect in it, like my brother said, because you're never going to be perfect in it. But the first thing we got to do is acknowledge that that's the Word of God. And if that's the Word of God, that's the standard of God, right? Not so that we could be condemned because we're missing the mark, because we do miss the mark. Amen? It's okay to miss the mark. But it's never okay to dismiss the Word of God as if not the mark to be hit. Amen? And when we miss the mark, it's the shed blood of God that helps us to stay on course so that we can continue reaching towards the call. Amen? Why, why that? Because the gift of God that is in us is based on the Word of God. It's not based on our own opinions. It's not based on what we want to do. It's not based on how we want to do it. In the Church of America 2023, we've kind of done that. If I want to serve God today, I will serve God today. If I want to praise Him, I will praise Him. If I want to do this, I will do this. And if I don't want, if I want to be nice, I'll be nice. If I want to cuss this guy out, I'll cuss this guy out. Don't worry, I'll just go tell God about it afterwards. See how we kind of missed it? But when you read the scriptures, that's not the way the, the scriptures are presented to us. He said, this is a standard. And he's declaring, I am Paul, and I know that I've been called of God for a very important person, pur purpose. And we are an important person to God, but we're called to a purpose. And God has given us a gift. And then when we take that gift and we have it in the depths of our hearts, and then we let that other stuff that we just read, malice and anger and all of that stuff, come and be exalted in our mind, then what we end up doing is we take that gift and we displace it or it doesn't get to be used, right? Well, the other side of it is this. The gift of God has been given to me by the authority of the Holy Spirit. And just like Paul can declare I'm apostle, we can declare whatever it is that we're called to be. Hey, how about this? I'm just Dan, a servant of the Most High God. Isn't that enough? Amen. That's all it takes. I am whoever we are. A servant of the Most High God. And then when the other stuff tries to exalt itself, we got to say, hold on, that's not the servant of the Most High God. That's the servant of the old mind, and that's all about me. Right? And then he goes back and he says, hey, I've been called. Amen? Because especially today, right now, where we're at, where we are at is the body of Christ, where you are at in your life and where I am at in my life, the gift of God that we have, that he's given us, the gift that he's given us to use for the kingdom is the, of utmost importance to yourself as much as anybody around us. Amen. El Cajon, Santee, America. I know I've said that before, but let's read on. To read. Let's go to Romans again. Because I don't think it's been stressed enough. Time is short. We can't be children tossed to and fro. We can't have our minds set on things that are contrary to God and then think that we're still walking with God, right? We can't be a liar and a thief and a crook and think me and God are tight, yeah? Can't. Does that mean God doesn't love us? No, of course he loves us. But he loves us enough to declare it in the scriptures to quit doing that, amen? He loves us enough to, to remind us that he's the almighty God. Amen? Where are we at? 15? Verse 2? I'm going to read this too. We then who are strong ought to bear with the weakness of others. Because we, when wherever we're at on the scale of weakness or strength, there's always somebody stronger and there's always somebody weaker. What happens if there's somebody stronger in the spirit? What should we do? Follow them. What else should we do? Learn, yeah, note, this, note their character and say, man, that's what I'm aiming for. And then learn from them how to get to that character. And then if we see somebody struggling below us with a different mindset, what do we do with that? Help them. Exactly right. We recognize, hey, man, this person might be stuck. I might be an avenue to help them. Not to come up and condemn them, to, but to remind them that they're called of God for a purpose. 
to remind them that God can, God, the Spirit of God in them can help them become an overcomer. Amen? That's what the body of Christ, we come together, and that's what Paul was doing. He came and gave him the gospel, and then he told him all these things, and then he didn't just stop there. He went on and preached the gospel somewhere else, and then he sent a letter back, and he said, hey, keep the fight, keep the faith. Keep stoking each other up. Keep pushing towards the mark. And I'm hoping to come back around. And when I come back around, I want to be able to impart to you a gift. Not a gift that he had. A gift that God had given just by them coming together. Because it was the body of Christ. Amen? Because if you notice, the enemy wants to suck us off. Isolate us. And get us weak. You ever be at home all depressed on your couch? Yeah. You ever feel this cloud just come? Anybody feel that cloud? See, that's the enemy. And he knows when that cloud comes, it's hard to step up. That's why it's so important that we come. We don't just come to church just to come to church. We come to church to be edified by God. We come to church to be edified by each other. And we come to church to edify. Amen? That's the whole point of coming here. That's why the whole time when we come here and we worship, the whole point of worshiping God is to have our hearts bare before God. That's why people say to raise your hands. Some people say it like this. It's a funnel. God, here I am. Funnel. Funnel your spirit in me. Others say it's a, it's a thing of surrender. God, I forgive. And it's not just man-made thing. How do we know it's just not a man-made thing? It's in the Bible. What does it say in the Bible? Lift up holy hands. Maybe our hands ain't holy. Maybe they're just in places they shouldn't have been. So we have a hard time lifting up holy hands because they're on things that they shouldn't be on. He says, make a <laughs> clapping. Hey, do you know it says that the oceans of the, of the, the waves of the ocean clap their hands? It says the trees do. And what else does it say? It says the rocks will cry out. We know that song, ain't no rock going to cry out in my place. Don't let a rock cry out in our place. Think about this. Think about no matter, even if you had the worst day of your life, all the things that God has done in your life just today. You have a home. You have your bills paid. And if you don't have your bills paid, you still have a home. And if you're on the street, you still have a place to sleep. You're still safe. You're still alive. How many people ate today? Anybody didn't eat today? Hallelujah. Ha, <laughs> good man. Me neither. <laughs> Ooh, I like it, Pastor. You're building my faith. Come to church to be edified. Amen. You know, I'm victim of it. And I'm guilt, not victim of it. I'm guilty of it myself, just coming through the church to make my motions. But, man, we don't want to find ourselves in that place. I come to church just to do my little thing so that I can go home and tell God, that I went to church. And now, God, don't you know I'm a good person? I went to church today. Hey, that's, that's called religion. It's rampant in America. Another thing, if we looked at the system, if we looked at the world, the condition of it, that's the condition of the Church of America. It is the condition of the Church of America. How many people have you seen heathens out there declaring the gospel? Have you ever seen them on YouTube and all these songs they sing and they praise God and they're not even, we know that they're in sin. But they're declaring that they love God. And not only that, our children are seeing this stuff. They're seeing these heathen s tell people how good God is to them. And they're rich and they're worldly and they hate Israel and they hate the church and they hate the organized church. This is a dire time. It's a dire time. And, hey, that's what pushed them in the Bible. It was a dire time. See, they saw that was going on. And it, around that time, I don't know exactly when, but they were killing Christians left and right. They were taking them. Hey, how long until they start doing that more here? Serious. What can we do about it? I'll tell you what. We, we have prayer meeting at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Hey, we can pray at home. We can be on our face. How many people have a, a, pr a prayer committed time? A prayer time that you've committed to God to seek God's face. Hallelujah. Keep at it. Don't give up. Amen. 
Don't get discouraged in it either. I'm going to read a couple more scriptures. We're going to close. We then who are strong, are you strong? If you're not strong, what can you do about it? Well, we can obey the scriptures. If you're not strong, don't be discouraged. Be strengthened in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. But he says, when those who are strong, bear with the scruples or the doubt of the weak. And do not please yourselves, ourselves. But let each of us please his neighbor for his good. But not just to please them in their discouragement, but leading to edification. See, sometimes we in the church, we like to go comfort people in their discouragement and we keep them discouraged. It's not just to keep in this place. It's to lead us into edification. What is edification? Exhortment, encouragement, strength. Amen. Let's read on. Verse 3. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me, Jesus saying. For whatever things were written before, again, he says this, all that we're reading right now, they weren't just good ideas. They weren't just things that were written. They were written before, written for our learning. So when we go to the scriptures, it's to, for learning how to apply it today. Amen? For we were written for our learning that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Hope in what? Our flesh? No. Hope in what? Our weak mind? No. Hope in our... Uh, carnal mind? No. Hope that one day Jesus will return? Yeah, but not just that. But we hope in Christ, like my brother said, life and peace. See, we're not just tapped into heaven. We're tapped into eternal life. Eternal life. It's called the word of God. It's the, it's the word of God. It's the bread of life, right? It's the living waters. Let's read on. Now, now may the God of patience and comfort grant to you to be what? Like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth come together as the body of Christ and glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ has also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant of the circumcision, for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the Father. So why did Jesus come? To confirm the promises that were already made. When we read the scriptures, what is Jesus trying to do? He's trying to confirm the promises that were already made. Amen? And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. That's Jesus speaking. All of this is prophetic word. Is that the scripture? All right. See, the Old Testament coming together today in the New Testament. Amen. That's what he said to confirm the promises made to the fathers. So when they're reading, huh? Amen. Amen. So when they're reading this is reminding of them of something else that was already declared. And then we can look and say, look at the fulfilling of God in my life. Amen. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Amen. And again, he says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, laud him, all you people. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles in him. The Gentiles shall hope. Is that what it is? You're all right, brother. See, that's one of the gifts he's got. Amen. He's uh, uh, Alma two. Firm believers and studiers. Of the Old Testament scriptures. Amen. Why do you do that, brother? Amen. What does it What does it do to you? Amen. Does it give you hope? Amen. 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 And then when you read it, it brings an edification and a joy and an excitement. Amen. And then now, in, in how many times you read a scripture and go, man, look at that. That tied all the way back to that little one pe- place. In a, and was it, it brings a, 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 an excitement. Amen. Look at God and all the energy people try and spend trying to tear down the word of God. It's the only thing that brings comfort and hope. Amen. 
The only thing that does, and they're trying to tear it down. I hate to tell you this, and I will say it, though. There's a whole bunch of church people, not this church people, but they're trying to tear it down, too. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to tear down the scriptures, and they're trying to conform it to 2023 as opposed to holding to the comforting scripture that God does not change. Amen? You can't change this and change that. It's always right. Amen? It's always true. It doesn't change with the times. That's the, one of the best things about this, the word of God. It doesn't change with the times. See, when we were young, we thought old people were stupid. But now we get a little older, we go, man, those old people are pretty smart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Well, I used to think he was the dumbest guy in the world. No, he was pretty darn smart. Verse 13. Now may the God of hope, this is a promise from God to us to those that hold to the scriptures. And if we haven't apprehended it, that's okay. It's a promise from God. And if it's a promise from God, then it's for us. And there might be something in between us and it. How many, I don't know about you, but I have all sorts of things between me and God. All sorts of things that are like a thorn in my side, a whole, all sorts of things that, that, that hinder me. But I, I'd, I'd make a decision to not let them be a hindrance. And if there's a problem, it's never God. It's always me. Amen? But this is a promise from God. Verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope, not by the flesh, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Which is, if you take this back to what we were talking about earlier, about the being in the spirit of our mind see and it says those that are weak in the mind see that's where when we come to god we're weak in the mind when we come to god we're always trying to bring god to our flesh we're always trying to bring him down to our thing amen but then when we start to get deeper in the scriptures we start to realize that the only way to get close to god is to by dying to ourself amen and he's given us the authority to die to ourself he even said on the cross it is finished but a lot of times we start putting religion in there and explaining to God, I've done it myself, why I don't have to change. Why it's not my fault. Why it's that guy's fault. Why it's the school system's fault or the government's fault or my working partner's fault or my wife's fault. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> but it's not my fault. It's always somebody else's fault. You see what I'm saying? But then when we start walking with God, because that's the, that's the carnal mind. But then when we start walking with God, this is what I found in my life. He's always tearing that stuff down. Whenever I say, hey, God, but he says he shows me something else. Amen. And he's always reminding me. So the, the spiritual mind, right? I lost where I was at right here. Verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in the hope that he promised, not in our own understanding, not in our carnal flesh, not in our own carnal mind, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I looked up this word, abounding. Here's the definition, letter three, number three, letter A. It says to exceed a fixed number of measure. Oh, that, yes, it says that too. Do you looked it up? No, I All right. Hallelujah. To exist or to be at hand in abundance, to furnish one richly so that he has abundance, a thing which comes in abundance or overflows unto us. That's what the word, and that's what he wants. And that's, hey, that's why I, I raise my hand. Think about that. Hallelujah. Because you want that abundance. You don't want what you have. We tried it our way. And even when we get in the church, we still try it our way. But when we, we come to a place in our heart and we get tired of our way and we start kind of pushing past and our way just kind of collapses, not because God's condemning us, because the ways of man are contrary to the ways of God. Amen. What you need and what I need in my heart is more of God. Amen. More of what he has in store. Amen. Does anybody want to share anything? We'll close with that. Mark.
Amen. Amen. That's awesome, brother. Anybody else? Hey. Yes. That's funny. Don't be guilty. Don't feel guilty, brother. That's pretty good, though. Amen. As long as yeah, I'm in agreement with that. But the thing that will hinder us is purposeful sin. Not unconfessed sin, but sinning on purpose, knowing we shouldn't be sinning. It says, who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and does not lift his soul to an idol. So what happens when we start sinning where we know we shouldn't be sinning? It's not that we're not loved by God. It's not that he hasn't died for that sin. But what happens is when we let the door, we open the door for the devil to come in and bring condemnation. Because now all of a sudden, when you go to lift your hand, not even lifting your hands, that's not even an important issue. It's really the heart. It's the heart condition before God. And when you go to do that, when you know you've been purposely in sin or running in sin or running in rebellion to God or doing stuff, you know, then you just open the door for the enemy to build a store a stronghold against you and sits there and accuses you that's where the problem is amen because when we start doing that then we then all of a sudden we find a, a stronghold of a resistance against us just like i was saying when you're on the bed at home and you're trying to go serve god and that enemy just comes and he wants to keep you why because there's you're in a real dog war fight amen the best way to get the victory is do it all that you can to live for god try to serve god not in not in obedience to the bible obedience to the voice of god and when you listen to the voice of god it will put us in obedience to the word of god amen because we can run around and say i did this and i did this and i did that see i'm good before god and that becomes religious also and that also says uh religion or uh, knowledge will puff you up that'll cause us another problem but the most important part in my opinion is that the voice of god through the power of the holy spirit he says thy word i will i will write on their hearts and he says to circumcise the foreskin what does that mean get rid of the garbage see it's not that we're in heaven and not heaven saved and not saved but what does happen is we find ourselves being beat up by the devil because of we're getting sidetracked and then what happens is then we're unuseful for the kingdom like we because we really do have a gift we have a gift and the enemy's terrified of you or me knowing what that gift is. The enemy's terrified of you or me taking that gift before God and laying it before God and letting God edify that gift. He's terrified of the Lord breathing fire on that, that, that gift. He's terrified of that coming up and out of you and somebody else might be ministered to by that gift or back and forth. 
So when we're not here, we're in our own knockdown battle. So that when we do come here, we just want to go, oh, my goodness, I made it. Where the other side of it is, man, I've been walking with God, not because I'm perfect. I've been walking with God in faith. And, yeah, I had a tough day, and I messed up, and I had this thought, and I had that thought. But you know what? That doesn't matter. My God is my God, and I'm going to follow him no matter what I'm doing or did. And if I get something out of line, I'm going to repent it, and I'm going to deal with it, I'm going to confront it. And then when I get done confronting it, I'm going to go live accordingly again. Amen? Go ahead, brother. Yes. Yes. With the word of God, thy word, O Lord, I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, if we're not careful, we think sin's not that big a deal. Don't you know he died for that? No, it doesn't say that. I can't find that in the Bible. I know he died for that sin. Go ahead, brother. Yes, I wanted to bring that up. That's right. That's good, brother. That's right. That's not the matter. with you brother exactly right exactly right anybody else that was wonderful brother yes Well, that's a deceiving spirit that you listen to at that point. That's what I was talking about. But hey, my brother hit it right. It's about love. But the word of God is truth. Amen. We don't dismiss the word of God. We don't take one scripture out of context. It all comes together. If you ever notice in the reading of the Bible, there's always two sides to everything. It says, I don't have sin, but then it says, if you say you don't have sin, you're a liar and truth is not in you. But at the same time, he calls us holy. So there's two sides. That's why the key thing is our relationship with God. The power of the Holy Spirit. And when the power of the Holy Spirit, it says that we will abound in the Holy Spirit. Not in ourselves, but abound in the Holy Spirit. And if we're in sin, the Holy Spirit knows how to convict us. And when we're struggling, he knows how to let us know you're struggling. And he also knows how to let us know to seek him. He knows how to let, bring us to a repentance. He knows how to come along and help us to make amends. He, he knows how to come along and help everyone kind of pull, edify one another and stay on the course. Amen. Because if the enemy wants to lie, the enemy wants to divide, the enemy wants to accuse, the enemy wants to separate, the enemy wants to kill. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. We're all in the battle. But the word of God is always the solution. Amen? It's always the thing that we go to when we say, hey, it can't lie. But it says, if I shouldn't be lying, then what should I not be doing? Lying. It says, I shouldn't steal, then I should not be stealing. It says, not to fornicate, I shouldn't be. And if you struggle in those things, it says, there's a difference between struggling and practicing. I've I've apologized 16 times this month. 
for, you know, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for truth, and we thank you for your spirit, and I thank you for mature people being in here tonight, Lord, that we could share the word of God, and I believe that you spoke, Lord. We know that you are holy and we're not. We're holy as, as the blood of Christ makes us holy, Lord, but apart from you, Lord God, we're in desperate, desperate times, Lord. So even now by faith, we invite the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, to lead us and guide us. We ask you, Lord, to confirm this body. We ask you, Lord, to give us direction. We ask you to give us vision. We ask you to give us peace, Lord God. And, Lord, we ask you to use us for your glory. Lord, the whole point of the gospel is that people could come to know you, Father, that people could be saved, that people could be set free from sin, that people could be pulled out of the pits of hell, Father. And, Lord, in your wisdom, you've purposed and chose to use the body of Christ in our imperfections. So we ask you at this church, Lord, Calvary Chapel, La Mesa, 7525 El Cajon Boulevard, that you would continue to prune us, Lord God, that you would continue to shape us, that you would continue to edify us. And, Lord, I rebuke even now by faith the lying spirit of condemnation that would try to come against us. Lord, we are children of the Most High God because of your love. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish. Lord, we're here because we believe in you. Lord, we're not here because we're perfect. But, Lord, we want more of you. And, Lord, our flesh gets in the way. The old mind gets in the way. And you said on the cross, Lord, that it is finished. You redeemed us. You've taken the law that was against us to condemn us, and you've dealt with it. But then you said, Lord, as you delivered them, you said, go and sin no more. You said in Peter to be holy as I am holy. Lord, meaning that you've enabled us to do these things. So we ask you to help us. And Lord, those that call this their home, I pray even now that you would help us to strengthen one another, unite with one another, allow you to build us up, Lord, and help us not just to be churchgoers, Lord, but to strive for the gospel, that people could come in these doors and be saved. You've given all of us in here a gift. You're the gift. You are the gift. Help us, Lord, to walk in it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Men's name. Only the men, though, right? This is 2023. You got to clarify that stuff. Let's sing a worship song if you like. If you want to have cake, feel free. I speak the 